Good morning, Monticello Christian Church family. Welcome to our online worship service this morning. May we begin our shared time together with the Lord with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you that you are present with us this day and always. We thank you that we have been drawn here to you, our source of all understanding. And we ask that you would teach us your wisdom, that we would bear good fruit in our life. Root us beside the streams of your wisdom, that the green leaves of our goodness fed by your insight may not wither. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. turn our hearts to the Lord as we lift prayers and praise not only for ourselves but those that we know. Let us pray. God of patience and mercy, we come to you as your children, uh, offering lip service to serving you, but we confess that when things get difficult, when we're called to do something which is hard for us, we shy away from the duty and the opportunity. We turn our back on service out of fear of failure. Forgive us, gracious Lord. Heal our fears and our, our weaknesses and strengthen us and give us courage to truly be your followers. Not counting the rewards, but rejoicing in the work that you lead us on. Today we lift to you those on our church prayer list. We lift up those on our hearts and humbly submit ourselves to you that we would find healing and hope in your presence. All of this we submit to you in the silence of our hearts now. Help us, Father, to seek strength in your word. Help us to reach out to others, not with thought of importance or gain, but in love and compassion. Help us to truly care for one another. And when we have done this, may we truly give our hearts and our service and all the praise of what our, all the work of our hands and the words of our mouth. May they give you praise, mighty God. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, for it was he who taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus came to bring peace among us. So let us now sow the seeds of peace in our world by sharing the peace of Christ with one another, stranger and friend alike. And may the peace of God be always with you. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one. Together we'll spread the news. 
news that God is in our land, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. All praise to the Father from whom all things come. And Christ Jesus is his only son. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. On the night before his betrayal, Jesus Christ took bread. And after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. And as often as you shall eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. He then took the cup and gave thanks to God for it and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, which is shed for you. And as often as you shall drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. At communion, we take the elements of bread and of juice. Bread is Christ's body, the juice representing Christ's blood. And we take this time in order to remember Jesus' death in our place and his resurrection that gives us victory. The answer to the question posed by the old hymn remains the same. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The writer of Proverbs teaches that God's wisdom is present and active in our lives in this way. It opens its hand to the poor and reaches out its hand to the needy. Jesus lived this wisdom in his life and called his disciples to live in such of this generosity. Let us give out of our own generous wisdom, a wisdom that seeks a presence and purpose in our life on behalf of all. Let us ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name as we bring our offerings into his courts this day. Amen. This morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, beginning in verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. 
A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. We continue nearing the close of our series focusing this, focusing on this, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, that we might not merely just seek to have it summed up for us, but that we would systematically move through this sermon and sit at the feet of Jesus ourselves and see what truths he is sharing, not only with his disciples in the first century, but with us today. If you have the opportunity to do so, I would encourage you to, to thank Brad, our, our music director, and anyone in the choir or on the, anyone on the praise team or whomever at your church is offering music because there is power and truth in music. I wanted to give a, a word of thanks to them uh, here at Monticello Christian Church because of many times a sermon was delivered through our, our hymns and through our music. The truth of the matter is, even in the secular world, uh, there is truth and observations about the world in music. One of which that I want to point out, and, and this is one from, from music released decades ago, that relates to our passage in, in how we picture things. I want you to think how in music, and, and I would like for you to tune your internal radio to the oldie station, how is the road to hell pictured as? What image is produced as to the road that leads to destruction? If you recall correctly, it's a highway. A highway to, well, you know where. But how is the way to heaven pictured in music? Well, it's a stairway. One's broad. And you just hop in and drive there. You get there quick. And a lot of people, uh, several across can go. But in a stairwell, it takes effort to ascend to the heavens. And only one person can move through that. It's a, it's a narrow uh, way. It's small as is the gate, a doorway, as opposed to a highway. That's smooth and flat and wide and broad. We have a hard word to hear today. We have a, a hard message set before us in this portion of the Sermon on the Mount. But to be honest, I think we need to hear more hard words. I know that I need to hear more hard words, more things that bring about conviction, that bring about change and transformation, rebukes and correction, Difficult things that our faith would not be held in vain. Our passage begins speaking of the narrow and the wide gates. That broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Recently, and perhaps you've seen this in the news, um, but if not, I will say there was a, a, a well-known Christian religious leader, voice in the world who made this statement. All religions are a path to God. Now, there is diversity of belief uh, in our church, and I would like to say that I'm sorry if that is a, a view that you agree with, but this uh, teacher sees the words in red and says that what we see here, this wide and well-traveled road, is the one that leads to destruction. That elsewhere, the words in red proclaim that Jesus Christ himself says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That the path to God, no one comes to the Father except through me, says Jesus Christ. 
This extends also into the way that we live our life. That the way that we are called to go about living our life, the way of Christ, the way of, of living according to God is one that will make us uh, walk a solitary road, a more lonely road. Because as we see, only a few find it to walk this road of obedience in humility to God. This teaching, it's hard to hear and moves next into a, a discussion of bearing good fruit. That, that we are not merely to just have the right talk as Christians, but to walk the talk that our actions and words should have alignment and the picture there is to bear good fruit as a tree that is healthy bears healthy fruit. And the fruit, as we know else, elsewhere through Christ's teachings, that an apple tree that is healthy produces healthy apples and so on as a, as a word picture. We have this, again, hard word that we are to bear good fruit, to walk the talk. Also, that this is specifically directed to acknowledge that there are false teachers in this world. And this is something that I grieve so deeply that as a pastor, as a teacher, as a parent and a father, as a Christian, I see in, in news cycles because the world loves salacious things. And, and when Christians and pastors and, and there is unfortunately the grievous truth, there is uh, no lack upon the news cycles of pastors who have messed up royally. And, and Christians who have misstepped and misspoke. And I grieve that. But even more so when we see not just those who, who are put forth as ones who have sinned. But ones who have, who have sinned uh, because we're all fallen people. But that who have gone forth and sinned habitually. Who have gone forth and sinned against God's people. Who have desecrated the name of God, who have portrayed themselves to be something that they are not, whose walk does not match, those who are in authority and those who are, are a voice and have influence, who are not good uh, bearing fruits. Their fruit is bad. It is tainted. It is rotten. We are to be bearing good fruit. It says that, that every good tree bears good fruit. It says people don't pick grapes from thorn bushes. Grapes are a commodity and they're traded and they were and they were cultivated. And nobody cultivates thorns unless you come to my garden. And then for some reason, those things grow really well. Or, or figs from thistles. No one gets th figs from thistles. No one wants thistles. No one wants thorns. If they're looking for figs, they grow figs. And so the proof is in the figgy pudding. When it comes to teachers, when it comes to voices, influencers, people we've subscribed to and, and hit the like, like button and all that. Now, on the other side of this argument, we love a good witch hunt. Let's be honest. We as humanity, as Christians, we love a good witch hunt. And so last week, we, I'm glad this came after what we heard last week, that judgment is not the place that we're supposed to sit. That is for Christ. We must have awareness, we must be discerning, but we must also understand that the grace afforded to us should be afforded to others as well. Imagine what it would look like since we love a good witch hunt. Well, sister so-and-so stubbed her toe in Sunday school and she said a wordy dirty. Let's kick her out and show her what's what. No, we would want grace for sister so-and-so who stubbed her toe and said a wordy dirty in Sunday school. That's a hard word to abide by, a hard word to hear, but even more so. And I say this understanding, I've just mentioned how important it is not to judge. So it's a harder word to even say. If a preacher talks more about you, talks more about your destiny, talks more about things that we've just kind of seen in, in last week where the focus is on the eye, if that preacher is having eye problems, and the focus and, and the talk is more about you than it is about Christ and his glory. Then I, again, this teacher says they're walking a broad road. 
And I know how hypocritical that must be to say that we aren't supposed to judge. But may we be discerning. And this voice is not above having others discern from it wisely. This voice is not one that is immune to misspeaking. So may you in this moment be discerning to where good fruit is being transmitted. We further go, seeing that we are to, to, to follow the narrow way, to beware of false preachers, to produce good fruit. And then we see perhaps the hardest word yet. Depart from me. I never knew you. Talk about a bad apple. Talk about a, a not bearing good fruit. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Heaven isn't a clubhouse that we may enter should we know the code word. On that note, which is a message in and of itself, church is not a social club. And we might go, I said good things. I did good things, but we bore no fruit. Those things that we did and the things that we said sought only to uplift and build perhaps ourselves. You see, fruit isn't always, rarely, flashy. I guess our faith is like yogurt. The fruit is on the bottom. It remains to be seen. Probably not a good analogy. But these outward-facing, good things, service and love and, and works in, in the deliverance of people and speaking truth, those are all good things. But we don't see anything in this list that isn't outward-facing. What is the substance of which is accounted to us as righteousness and, and gives entrance into heaven by grace through faith, it is Jesus Christ. It, it's not merely an intellectual assent to Jesus because here's the thing. Satan believes in Jesus. Satan knows the words of Christ are true. Yet he does not at any way obey, though if commanded he must but he is also not humble his weapon is what self we enter into this life as a christian with humble obedience that doesn't mean we don't do so with boldness but knowing that god is the one from whom we receive salvation it's not through our own merit of doing things even good things when we do things in our own name it says, oh, we, we, Lord, Lord, we drove things out in your name like it was some kind of magic word to do something. It's by grace through faith and humble obedience that we find ourselves in the place where we, we by mercy, are, are rescued from destruction and by grace give an entrance into heaven. You see, Christianity, this might blow your mind, Christianity isn't a religion. That this, this preacher's lost his mind. Christianity, as Christ understood what, what the words that he was saying, as I see Christ instituting, he didn't come that we might have another religion. Because religion is rules. Religion is, is the right words. Religion is modified behavior. Christ came that we might have relationship. Relationship with him. Relationship with God. Relationship through the Holy Spirit. With God and with one another. Love God and love people. We understand 
relationships. We may not understand or have our minds wrapped around religion. In fact, I think most times we don't have the right idea of what religion is. But we understand relationship. Consider the relationship that you have with a parent. Consider the relationship that you have with a friend, the uniqueness and the closeness of that relationship. And consider the relationship then in comparison to your boss, the relationship that you have to me or your pastor and how that differs from a parent or from your friends. Consider the relationship that you have with your mail carrier. You may know their name. You may give them a, a gift at Christmas, which I have to say is, is very classy to do because they're out there working hard. But when if we see God and the relationship that we have like a mail carrier, they come and they bring information to us. If we look at this as just a letter from a far off being, giving us demands on what to do, where he sends us bills and, and sends us junk mail. If, if that's the relationship we have with God, we are not in a relationship that God desires for us to be in with him. But one of a parent, one of a friend, one of, of intimate understanding of our needs and our wants and our desires and our capacities that we would know his will and follow it. We cannot follow Jesus when it's convenient. And expect to bear good fruit and to walk the narrow way. We cannot follow Jesus on our own terms to withdraw Jesus from the box that we placed him in upon the shelf that we would use it when we need it or want to put on the, the mask of Christianity. That's not obedience. That's not humility. That's not a relationship. If we're going to be Jesus followers, if we're going to be disciples, it requires obedience to his will and to his word. May it be so in us. May we follow the narrow way. May we bear good fruit. May we study and be nourished by God's word. May we be in a relationship with Jesus. You, in this moment, wherever you find yourselves, you are most likely not in a church building. Guess what? You can still talk to Jesus and he can still speak to you. The Holy Spirit is within you. So wherever you find yourself, the cereal aisle at Walmart, in the greatest, grandest, most beautiful cathedral in all of the world, or in, you may go to, to the, to, to the uh, wilderness uh, under a sequoia tree or out into the rice paddies in Jakarta or wherever else you find yourselves. God's there and is with you. And his love for you extends beyond understanding. So may we walk the narrow way. May we bear good fruit. And may on the day that is appointed for everyone, the day of judgment, when we stand before God, by grace through faith, you and I, these creatures of the dirt, will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You sought me. To, you sought to do my will, to know me and not merely say the right thing and do the right thing but be Christ's own. May it be so in you today.
us go forth proclaiming the word of God with boldness. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.